Welcome back. I'm Rob Booker. I'm Justin. And uh, got another question from our friends over at Booker Wealth. If you want to send a question about the currency market or about the financial markets that I probably won't be able to answer anyway, you can hit me up on Twitter at Rob Booker. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to see your comments and questions. So what was this one? This one was the what? Blah, so, blah, what? Yeah. So the question is, why is the, FF, why is the FX market the biggest market in the world? And talk about where the investment comes from. All right, so it's it's easy to answer the first question. Right. I'm a, I'm a currency trader because of the volatility. I love the volatility and I love the action. My friend Tim Sykes loves penny stocks for the same reason. We're two sides of the same coin, right? We're just two peas in a pod. Two pods in a, two escape pods in a Carillion cruiser. From mothership. Yeah, exactly. All right. The FX market is volatile. The FX market is the biggest in the world, and here's why, because everything costs money. You want to buy milk in New Zealand, you want to buy lambs in New Zealand, you want to buy rocks from Australia, you want to buy oil from Canada, you want to buy cars from China, you want to buy television sets manufactured in Mexico, you need Chinese yuan, Mexican pesos, Canadian dollars, you want to buy Swiss chocolate, you need Swiss francs, the Schweizer Franken, that's what you need, you need a lot of Schweizer Franken. I'm really on Switzerland lately, I don't know what the problem is You're with me. You're beating them up today. I'm beating them up today. Uh, it, it, you want to buy anything in the world, you want to buy American stocks, you need American dollars. You want to buy uh, British stocks, you need British pounds. You want to buy European stocks, you need euros. You want to buy Norwegian oil, you need Norwegian krona. You, 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 want, to, you want to buy some trinkets in Vietnam? You need some dong. You need some dong. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Vietnamese dong. That's why the currency market is the biggest in the world. Stocks aren't the biggest in the world because you don't pay for Swiss chocolate with Swiss stocks. You, you, you buy, everything in the world is bought with money. The, the reason gold's also still so attractive is that it has this long history of having been or not having been any longer the backup, the backstop on dollars or Swiss francs or other currencies. That it was always viewed as money in and of itself. When they discovered gold in Sutter's Mill, so Sherman, the, the future famous general of the Civil War, right. sitting, I'm making all this up, is sitting, at, I'm not making this up, is sitting in an office in uh, California and somebody rolls this, gold, this piece of gold in front of him, this giant piece of gold in front of him. And no one had ever really figured this out before, but no one knew it, but in Sutter's Mill, they were processing logs or you know running, in, in order to right. do that, they were, running water down through the mill mm -hmm. and out popped this giant piece of gold and it ended up on the desks of the military people. California was, was not an independent state of the union yet or was close to but wasn't quite yet. And but we were the we were the the most powerful people there. We being the white. I mean, I wasn't there. <laughs> my, none of my none of my people were there. Well, you were born in eighteen sixty-five. All my all my, pe my family, we had a meeting, and we said, "This gold, what is up with this gold thing?" And that's when we decided. Anyway, Sherman says, "Oh man, wow!" When they and he bit, and the, as the story goes, he bit into it. He goes, "Oh, that's really gold." And someone probably said, "Stop, stop biting that." Right. Um, and then he was also in. <laughs> I'm just gonna say he was into hip hop and that's why the gold tooth. I'm not gonna say that, that's a terrible thing to say. Um, oh, that's not actually true at all. Oh, man. But uh, here's the reason it was such a big deal. Paper money was all over the place back in those days. And individual states at some times and places were issuing their own paper money. Right. And back in those days, promissory notes, like literally the prom, uh, Cornelius Vanderbilt's promise to pay another steamboat owner for their route on the Hudson it was done with a promissory note. And that steamboat owner could sign over his promissory note from Cornelius Vanderbilt as money to buy a new steamboat. Oh, wow. And then the steamboat manufacturer could turn that over to buy a bunch of material or whatever. Heroin. I don't know. Wow. Right? Like, and that promissory note could literally travel around the country. And when Cornelius Vanderbilt didn't have this problem, but others of his competitors did, when those competitors fell into hard times, those promissory notes would trade for 50 cents on the dollar. So you can imagine back in those days with the volatility of the promissory note market, that's crazy, right? That is. That's crazy. 
and how much risk you were taking if you took a promissory note from somebody else three times down the line as payment, when they find gold, gold wasn't just money. And you could pay for stuff a year later, you could pay for stuff in San Francisco in gold dust. It went from a nothing town to a giant town and you could pay for you know, overnight companionship or getting hammered or buying hammers or whatever. You could buy in a bag of gold dust. It wasn't just money. It was what people viewed as the backstop for all money. Did you also have gold? Did Does gold, this is where this, this really got some steam to pick up on the Cornelius Vanderbilt. Nobody probably gets that. I'm just reading the Pulitzer Prize winning biography of Cornelius Vanderbilt. I'm halfway through it. It's just spectacular. This guy is giving a speech. He's a multimillionaire. He's probably the richest man in America at the time. He's giving a speech in New York. Somebody's heckling him in the crowd. He's 54 years old. He walks down into the crowd and doesn't just punch the guy in the face. He beats him up so badly the guy goes to the hospital and then he goes back up and finishes speech. Like wow. this guy was, you think, <clears throat> like can you imagine Bill Gates doing that? No, you can't. No. No, you can't. Like, no, but maybe one of the, like his bouncers, like yeah, escorting him Steve Ballmer, who took over for Bill Gates, you could probably imagine him doing that. He owns the Clippers now. I don't know why we're talking about this. Anyway, from those humble origins in the office of a couple military general people in California comes this, this giant movement west that every steamship, um, they were trying to build a, they were trying to build an overland passage through Nicaragua at the same time they were building the Panama Canal because so many people were trying to get from New York to California and they didn't want to go all the way under the tip of South America. Why? Because of gold and gold backed the currency. I mean, at least that's what eventually happened. Right. It became the stability. Gold wasn't just it, it was it, it was something that's solid, that it wasn't a promissory note. It wasn't going to stop being worth something. It, it, there wasn't anyone else behind gold. Whereas behind a dollar, there's a government. Behind a promissory note, there's a person. Behind a stock, there's a company. Behind It was just gold. It was money. It wasn't the thing behind money. It was money. And anyway, I don't even know how we got on this topic. The history, what was it? The, like why the FX market is the biggest in the yeah, world? Why anyway, is it so big? Gosh, that was a real... <clears throat> And then the second question is, where does it come from? Where does money come from? No, where does the investment come from? Oh, where do, so, so like, that's the point of the whole conversation is, I don't know how we got off on all those tangents. The point of it is that it comes from, like you and I go to Vietnam and we got to change for dollars into dong right. at the airport, or we somebody wants to buy European stocks, so they got to transfer dollars into euros in order to do it. A bunch of Japanese investors want to buy New Zealand Kiwi bonds it had a name from the Kobayashi. I'm, I'm not, that may be a type of beef, not a type of bonds, but they had a name. Like the New Zealand bonds had a Japanese name because they were so popular. So it comes from ordinary people like you and I, it comes from institutions. Uh, governments have to transfer money. It, th this is for, for the longest time, oil has been paid for in dollars. The, the, if, you were, if you were France, back in the day of the franc, and now in the days of the Euro, if you wanted to buy oil, you had, it was petrodollars, like you had to buy it in dollars. You had to transfer from your currency into dollars first and then from dollars. And that's how so many dollars, we talk about how many dollars are sitting in China right now. There's a ton of dollars sitting in the Middle East for the same reason that everything was, and there has been this longstanding worry that when the, when the Middle East gets tired of America, they're gonna start only accepting payment in yuan, in Chinese currency, right. or in, in even the euro, euro, petro euros, petro yuan, or whatever. So where does the investment in, where, where does all the, what dictates the, the price of a currency in a $4.5 trillion market? Everyone, everyone in the world, the, 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 everything starts in currencies. And the US dollar, to bring this full circle, the US dollar is now what gold, used to be. It's the final stop because gold doesn't back up most currencies anymore. The US dollar is viewed as the world's backstop. And it's probably not a great idea of paper money. The, 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 the world of paper money within five years could be completely different. I'm starting to believe that some country like Venezuela is going to go to Bitcoin. I'm starting to think that the world's backstop 
you know, gold's just a thing in the ground, right? Right. And it, it has its value because it's pretty, but it also has its value because there's theoretically a limited supply. Right. And if we find out that the, the largest oil field in Saudi Arabia, I can't remember the name of it, but um, it just escapes me now. If we find out that thing, they can't get down to the rest of that oil, oil's gonna shoot through the roof because there won't be enough of it. It's all, oil's not beautiful, it's just in limited supply. Right. As people mine more and more Bitcoin, you're gonna realize there's a limited amount of that. And if you can also spend that Bitcoin to buy a house and spend that Bitcoin to buy stuff on Amazon, and there's a limited supply of it, there's a chance that people will have more faith in a limited supply of Bitcoins that they will have than they will have in, in even the US government. We're, we're, we're gonna live through some of the, the, the most monumental changes in currency ever. So right now, everyone, that we, whatever you need to do in the world, whatever transactions you need, you need currency to do it. We're not exchanging promissory notes anymore. Right. Uh, gold used to back it up. Gold used to be the final determinant, determining factor of value. Does gold back this up? And, it, and, and there's a chance that that dynamic is, is ending. There's a chance that something else will replace that over time. Anyway, that was a really long answer to a very short question. I'm Rob Booker, this is Justin. I'm Justin. And uh, happy to be here with you if you're watching on Booker Wealth or whatever. Super excited to meet you. You can hit me up on Twitter, at Rob Booker. And you can ask a question about the markets or the history of something, or you can tell me to shut my mouth, in which case I'll just argue back with you. It doesn't really matter. I love you. We'll keep talking. And we'll keep talking anyway. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.